Okay, so this piece of the puzzle is of high interest to people in the 3D world because this is a laser-based projection system that RED is building, the RED laser projector. And um, it's a 4K projection system, and it also is a 3D projection system in 4K, right? So we're doing some really interesting things in 3D. Guys? It's okay. We'll start again. Okay. It's all right. Let them go in. They're almost, it's almost done. It's always got to be one in the crowd. That's all right. <laughs> okay. No problem. Ready, ready, okay. Still rolling. All right. Whenever you're ready. So, so this is something that's obviously gaining a lot of high interest in the in the world of of. Um, 3D. Um, this is our red projector, which we're showing for the first time here at NAB 2012, and it is a 4K projection system, as well as a 3D projection system in 4K. And what's unique about it, there's a number of things that are, are unique about it. It's a laser-based projector, so it brings a tremendous amount of value in the 3D world in terms of we need a lot of light output for good 3D, right? And one of the challenges that 3D has in a uh, in a, a exhibition world is just getting enough light on the screen in 3D and a lot of the uh, the projector companies and projector manufacturers are are working on that problem but the problem is really not on the on the manufacturing side it's on the exhibition side as the projector owners the, the theater owners are trying to, to save costs and they're constantly running the bulbs lower than they should be for the optimal 3D experience so that's a problem that needs to be beaten in a different way, right? So what we do is we drive this whole in, this projection system with laser-based light, which means that it's much more cost-effective, it's much brighter, and it's much more stable in terms of its lifespan. Um, so a typical projector bulb in a big theater, a big exhibition projector, is going to run, you know, 1,200, 1,500 hours, and then that needs to be replaced. Plus, the minute you start turning that projector on and using it, that light source starts to degrade, right? So it constantly has to be recalibrated, and over time, the light itself is just not as good. And then, after a fairly short time, it needs to be replaced, and the bulbs are very, very expensive. With laser light, the bulb doesn't actually live in the projector. There's actually no traditional bulb. The light source lives off-site, right? So the projector can be very, very small. I mean, you've seen what exhibition 3D professional projectors look like, right? They, they look like a pizza oven, right? They're that big. This looks more like a pizza box, right? Because there's no light source in the projector. The light source lives someplace else, and then it's connected via fiber optic cables. So the other big advantage is you don't need a soundproof room for this projector. This could, projector could live in any environment, and it doesn't generate any noise because the noise is in a closet somewhere. With That's where all the light sources are, right? The bulbs, or not the bulbs, but the laser light source lasts probably 10 to 12 times longer than a traditional light source, and it doesn't degrade, it's coherent light. So the cost of running these projectors is much, much less over time. So the, as you might imagine, all the big theater chains are really, really interested in this. Now, what's pretty exciting about this is that this is a very scalable product. So what you're looking at here can either live inside a home theater environment, a, a high-end home theater environment, or what we call a, a traditional DI suite where they grade movies and finish movies. So for a screen that's around 15 feet or smaller, we'll deliver this projector in 4K, in 3D in 4K, for $10,000, which is pretty shocking. Uh, in a lot of ways. So, so that's part of the equation. The other interesting thing is that it's scalable. So as you add bigger light engines, you get to a bigger screen size. And we can go up to full exhibition screen size, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 feet, you know, the biggest screens in the world. And the only thing that changes is the light sources, the lasers get much more powerful. But you can hang this inside an auditorium without a soundproof room or use it in multiple projection environments. So you can start to see how does this really start to open the world of when I used to have this thing that was as big as a small car and I had to hang it someplace versus something that's so small and lightweight I can put it almost anywhere and it doesn't generate any noise. All the noise is off site. So that's a big part of it. Now, for 3D, what's really, really critical is the way this projector works, which is different than how a traditional projector would work in 3D. So you guys, this is all about 3D, right? So, you do, so people know about 3D, and you understand that in the 3D world, there's something called flashing of the images, right? So when you're in a projection environment and you're watching a 3D movie, what's happening is they're, they're, the images are interleaved, right? And they're doing what's called flashing. So they're bouncing the two images between the two eyes, throwing it through the projection system in real time that's coming at your brain. What happens over time is your brain has to figure all that out, right? And then um, 
your eyes have to figure all that out with using your brain. So you get eye strain and you get what I call brain strain. So what happens to me in a movie, which is a lot of people, is after watching two hours of 3D, it hurts after a while. Even if the 3D is really good and, and all the depth mapping is done correctly and the depth budget is done correctly, it still hurts after a while. It's because of the technology that's driving the 3D projection system, right? What we do is completely and fundamentally different. We're doing 3D at each eye simultaneously. So there is no traditional flashing like the other projection systems. We're throwing the 3D image on each eye simultaneously at whatever frame rate it's shot at. So you wear passive glasses, which are really, really comfortable, and the um, information can come at you at up to 120 frames a second on each eye simultaneously, which is a, a monstrous deal. I mean, this, it may not sound like a big deal, but as you go and see this movie, so we produced a short movie to demonstrate how this works, right? And uh, it's a Ridley Scott produced movie that his son Luke directed and wrote. It's about 20 minutes long. It's a sci-fi movie and it's got really, really interesting 3D all the way through it. And we've cycled through thousands of people over the course of NAB over the last few days. And as I talk to people coming out of the theater, they say, this was the most comfortable, best 3D experience I've ever had. It seems just different than anything I've ever seen. How come? And then we explain to them, well, it's because you watch 3D for the first time completely differently than you've ever seen it before. Because this 3D is coming at both eyes at the same time. So your brain doesn't have to work to put that 3D picture together. And that's part of what it is. Uh, the companion product to the 3D projector is something we call Red Ray. So Red Ray is our playback engine for 4K, and we're actually using that in the theater, so you'll see it if you haven't seen it yet, you'll, you've seen the, the movie, that's playing back in 4K at a data rate lower than HD Blu-ray, which is pretty shocking, right? So these are uh, also sort of, you know, in the works and coming out pretty soon. So that's kind of what, uh, what we're up to. This is also the, the Red Ray player also does 3D in 4K. So it's the companion product for the projector. The projector can take all kinds of 3D sources. You don't have to use the Red Ray, but the Red Ray is the designed tool for the, for the projector. So on the technology side, as you know, and you know, you're getting deep into the tech of this, when you start looking at, at laser light, coherent light sources, there are some inherent challenges that you have to overcome. Um, and the stuff that we're overcoming with our engineering team is all the things that that laser world has been working on for quite some time and we're we're at the cusp of your, I mean you've seen the example and what I would say today because we're not shipping this projector yet is the images that you saw today are pretty stunning right and there's no sparkle there's none of that kind of artifact that you're used to seeing this that image that you saw is probably the worst this projector will ever look is at NAB because it's not completely done yet right and it's already people are walking out going it's amazing. It's, it's perfect the way it is. And we're like, well, maybe perfect for you, but not perfect for us. When it's really fully ready, then we ship it. So, um, but all those, those challenges of these earlier technology tests have been completely overcome now. Um, and, and they're working through all the last little nuances of it. Do you have an estimated shipping date at this time? I think the target for uh, the red uh, laser projector and the, uh, the red ray players is by the end of the year. That's always based on engineering targets, so we're, we're never exactly sure when we're going to be done, but we, we have a pretty good idea w uh, based on our, uh, our progress so far, and that seems to be where we're headed. So this will come to theaters pretty soon. How are pre-sales going at this point? Well, we're not even taking orders yet. We're just taking sort of interest for it, but uh, <laughs> I don't have to tell you that we're going to sell a lot of these projectors, as you might imagine.